Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Georgia Mountain Unitarian Universalist Church. Our mission is to inspire connection, advocate love, nurture wonder, and serve the world. I'm Berger Vaughn, and I'm today's service leader. Oh. Our speaker today is Bian Lau. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Bina Niao. I would like to thank Big for, uh, for arrange for me to speak with you today. And also, I would like to say how very much I enjoyed, enjoyed being with you uh, last Sunday to celebrate the Martha Luther King, Martha Luther King Day. I am often inspired by his speech. I have a dream. <laughs> so I'm honored to speak with you at the George Mountain Unitary University Church uh, where you are working to support injustice and love in a more compassionate and inclusive world. I'm here to share my story and to occur in, encourage each of you to never give up your dream. I would like to ask each of you to think about your families, the journey to America. Today, there forever, we need to be, we need to love our neighbor and practice forgiveness and remember that we are all in this together. When I come to America, I was 45 years old. I do not speak English at all. If you have trouble to understanding anything, what, what, anything what I say, please feel free to speak with me at the service. Uh, that actually the painting, the church, I uh, donated the, the Lutheran church. But the church is a very important place for me because when I first come to America, I could not speak English, and I was very lonely. And the Northern Church on the Purdue University campus, you know, walked to me, a very kind minister told me that other Chinese students come there to learn English. So they encouraged me to stay in America when I was about to return to China to a successful career. You know, I've, and I had finally achieved there, but the church members, just like you guys, have to remind me to never give up my dream. People often ask me, what is your American dream? My American dream is to have the freedom of speech, to share my truth, and to be allowed to express my human rights and my personal power as a woman and a citizen in the world. As an artist, having the freedom of self-expression to paint what I feel, think, and desire for myself is extremely important. In China, I do not have this freedom. The Chinese government was very controlling about the art and what I was allowed to paint. The painting, Freedom, tells the story about the birth of freedom with me. Mao Zedong was the dictator of China for 29 years. Mao's government locked the Chinese people away from the rest of the world. He controlled all news media to keep his power just like North Korea does today. I want everyone to know that I love China and the carry no hate in my heart for what happened to me and my family. I only want to educate people so such things do not happen in any country. Get a little water. 
the painting tell the story about my life when I first come to America. Study work, I'm really study work a hard, uh, study hard only English. We're working three jobs: dishwash, sewing, and teach art to children. Bill Clinton was the president, and his image is behind the flag. The price we must pay for our freedom in America is to work together and study the facts of our situation and always remember our constitution of the United States. Start the words, we the people. Please join me to keep our freedom alive. Mm. My art and a story follow my journey to China and offer an honest look at the politic, social, and cultural issues of China for 50 years. My paintings are a window into the searching for meaning, purpose, love, and the power of holding on to your dream. The paintings that surround window and me of photographs of my mother, my father, my grandmother, and my other family members. On the table is an open book with a photograph of Chairman Mao. Mao declared that everyone born into New China will have a great life. When I was born in 1954, there was a terrible flood of the Xinjiang River. And it was foretelling that my life would not be a beautiful dream, but an nightmare. I sculpted the relief of myself born as a baby. I was delivered by my father, which was one of the few times in life we were lucky he was a doctor. The painting called Voice of Freedom. When I was a very little girl, my father would listen to the radio program, Voice of America. He had the head under blanket was the radio because everyone was caught listening to American radio will be punished. To me, as a child, he just looked like he was playing game. I wanted to join in the fun, but my grandmother held me close to her. It really, she turned like stones. My mother was standing next the window, and my brother was watching by the door in case a neighbor may report the authorities. We will hear a person speak through the radio, both feel and hope, we feel our heart. Oh, it's still sleeping? Okay, it's not. My father was trained in both Chinese and Western medicine, and believed in free speech. The government labeled her named my father a capitalist and took his business and everything we owned. There's three paintings about my father. The first that describes my father's imprisonment. High on the wall, a small window, represents my father's hopeless. In the second painting, he stands on store outside being punished as capitalist. In the third and the final painting, a news hangers from the ceiling, symbolize how my father took his life on the wall, hanging a Chinese poem, asking God. There are many movements during the new China period. The Great Chinese Forum began in 1960. 
millions of Chinese died from a starvation. I mean, tell you, four years from 1958 to 1962, we have 45 million Chinese died. I was always hungry. And my grandmother and my mother sold everything they had to give some food for us. I remember one day in our dinner, we have a little bit of meat. It tastes like smoke and bake. We enjoyed the meat very much. It was so good. Everyone happy. Just a little bit. We asked her for more. She said, there's no more. We asked her, Grandma, why is there any more? She said, I only caught one small, tiny mouse. Uh, this painting is called Sister Goes to Heaven. One day, my nine years old sister and his classmate were walking along a wall outside the school. A pile of coal fell against the wall and covered the were storms and the coal dust. Still alive, they put a towel in a classroom on a desk, but forgot her. My sister bled to death on the desk. The painting depicts my sister walking out of the door for the final time. The empty chair is waiting for my sister's return. The painting is called My Mother's Work Hard. In our study, no one wanted to hide my mother because of my father's criminal status as a capitalist. My mother finally got a job pulling heavy loads of the construction materials from a storage building up a steep hill to the builders of the construction site. The painting is called. Oh no! Oh, it's my here. I have two. The painting is called "Forced Marriage." It's about my end, and it's part of the Chinese hiding history, only taught by this woman family, such as my aunt. My aunt joined the army, and the. Uh, other women never thought they will be forced into marriage with soldiers to keep these men on the Russian board. Many of them commit suicide. My aunt, the tall figure, and other young women and the girls are walking through the Xinjiang desert. They are so tired and they begin to feel the future is hopeless. Some woman died on this part of the journey. <clears throat> Chinese Cultural Revolution began 1966, and all school was shut down. Students feel they had the power to destroy the classroom, burn the books, and torch the teachers supported the revolution. <clears throat> In 1968, Mao called for Chinese students to receive a nature education from Pu Farm. 70% of schoolgirls were raped with insurance. When my daughter was born, my ex-husband, at the time, did not accept our daughter as part of his family. I raised my daughter as a single mother. The painting shows me taking my daughter by myself in the middle of the night to the hospital. To get my daughter to the hospital required me run through street in fist with many criminals. The painting is called, 
I won't be alone. It's a very special piece because of what happened to me. When a Buddhist monk speak with me during a very dark time when I was sad and suffering, I ask the monk, and I become a nun. The monk helped me to understand that become a nun was not for me. I had to face the truth of my life and find the courage to never give up my dream. During the trip of my, uh, during, uh, during one of trips to Tibet, where I went to Tibet three times, this one time, we had the opportunity to paint a woman who had just been married with her beautiful bride dress. We began painting the new bride but someone, some people warm here, that our brushes were taking his soul away as we put his image on our canvas. She broke it down and could not continue to let the house painting her. His sadness left a deep emotional impact on me. The painting, unforgettable expresses my experience during the time I worked as a writer at the age of 15. I had to leave my family and live in a morgue that has been a temple. It was still surrounded by many graves, graves and I was afraid every night. For many years, I continued to be afraid of the dark and have Lightmare. I finally put my fears on the canvas to release the tricks my mind had played on me to be afraid. Painting and play piano on my therapy. And they helped me to face my fears. On the top left, I have incorporated the image of another unforgettable part of my journey. In 1985, I was in Tibet painting a village and I'll translate leading out to a place that had been totally destroyed. The Chinese army bombed the village in 1950s. I'll translate to the house that the innocent people run outside to see the airplane dropped things from the sky. They had no idea. The plane was dropping bombs and they many will be killed. I would like to read uh, this part from my book. <coughs> the light I saw the great deer about the new bride crying, and the people of the village can die. When I tried to sleep, I began to remember how frantic I have been when I was 15 years old, and I slept along in the morgue surrounded by griefs and ghosts. I feel asleep in tears for all the young women in danger and dreamed that I was trapped, transported back to my bed in the old morgue. As I was lying there in my bed, a ghost came through the window and creep up my bed. As I picked out from under my bed seats, I saw the most horrible face softening in my dream. A bright flash of fire and light explode and the thunders, the sound cracked in my ear. A bomb had exploded, and my soul was leaving the earth and going to heaven. I was floating, and everything was very quiet. And I still as I felt someone gently hold my hand. It was the kind monk 
who had helped me understand that I could not be a nun because I had to find the courage to face life and the passion to be an artist. As we look down on the blue plant earth, without words somehow, the monk helped me understand that all people must learn to live together in harmony. I realized I must learn to paint away the warmth of hers and the feel by uniting the people in an understanding of love and compassion. I woke up back in my bed and at the hotel and feel the presence of my mother's deep love to carry on. I promise to paint away the hurt tomorrow by painting my very best, most beautiful people's and the places I will visit. When I was uh, 16, I began to work as a welder in a church that had been turned into a factory. This is a very large painting. It's called My Journey. And it represents my life in China. People compare my story to Anne Frank during the World War II. Millions, millions more people died on, on the mall in China. I had many difficult times. I was lucky to have my family and many people to tell me, never give up your dream. That is a sculpture of Chima Mao and the represents are all dictators who have one eye to focus on doing everything to keep in power when the another bond in the other eye to what their policy are doing to millions of people. My presentations are meant to, to be educational, not political. All country go through dark time. My great, great is the hope is to encourage everyone to face your fear and suffering, to never give up your dream, and to, to practice love and the compassion as taught here at your church. The painting is from my series of painting called Calming Into Tibet. I enjoyed the painting there, painting this Tibet people because they helped me catch your questions. We often ask you one another, where are you from? <laughs> Thank you. The painting called Sweet Dream and the Light Mail. My sweet dream come true when I was teaching at the Hammer School of Art Design, Indiana. And getting my master's degree in painting. During the time, my daughter received her two master's degrees. In 2005, we both pursued our highest degree of education as my daughter moved to Connecticut to receive her PhD, and I received a Master of Fine Art. Then we both became a full-time faculty. But the nightmare happened during the year is George W. Bush was our presence and America experienced a very tragic day, September 11. This painting and the two sculptures about my daughter and my two grandson represents my dream come to true. Uh, the painting is Dream of Love and I found my dream love finally, and can can you say hi to everyone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we married in 2016, and that year, I retired as a associate professor uh, from the art school to concentrate my artwork and be with my family. That's my two grandkids. 
And these are just some examples of my work and story. You know, my book has over 500 images. You can see more of my artwork and learning more Chinese history and the culture from the book. I hope this will see my work and how my story and my do not my stories we look more carefully at the world around it and discover beauty in unusual places. It's also my wish to encourage people be true to their own journey and to never give up the dream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, yeah, yeah.